Howdy y'all, this is Ethan Bonbriel, back with more coming out on top, and this time around we're going to go ahead and go on the Brofinder date with Terrence. So let's check out his profile real quick. Terrence is a music lover who looks like he's just passing through town looking for some discreet fun. So you're going to notice several things. For one, Terrence ain't got no body hair, which is not because I didn't turn the body hair options on in the settings menu, which you can do, um, but because he just doesn't have it. Uh, and he's also a good bit skinnier than most of the people we've been on dates with so far, so that's one of the things that the creator of the game promised to do, is add more body diversity in the uh, future updates of this game, so this is one of the examples of that. But, before I get ahead of myself, we're gonna go ahead and shoot this dude a message. Hello, Terrence. You message Terrence, who seems eager to meet. He does, however, have a few requests. Look, I'm a flexible, open-minded guy. I can handle a few quirks. Let's see what he's about. So I want to stress that this needs to be a discreet meetup. Sure, uh, I saw that in your profile. And I'd appreciate it if you take the side streets on your way over. Don't want anyone following you. Okay, this is new and mysterious. Kind of freaky to you. I know I must sound pretty paranoid. Well, maybe just a little bit. And one more thing. Make sure your clothes aren't too flashy. We can't have you attracting any undue attention. You know, it would be really a gigantic shame and really awkward if we went on this date and he, like, harvested our organs within the first hour, because that would just ruin the entire night. Um, and I feel like it's getting to that point, but... Oh, man. He sends you the address of his hotel and a room number. Use the employee entrance to the north side of the hotel. It's a green, unmarked door. Go up the stairs to the second floor, then take the elevator up to the top. Well, how about I just rappel to your balcony? No, it's still light out. People are gonna see. I was joking. Oh, lol. Okay. Good one. Alright, see you soon. So, we gotta do it. Um, in our pursuit to get laid by as many men as possible in this playthrough. We gotta do it. So we're gonna make our way to this hotel. You notice an excited mob surrounding a limo in front of the main entrance. It looks like there's some sort of event going on. I guess he doesn't want our date to get mixed up in the hoopla. You sneak through the employee entrance and look around. The concierge eyes you suspiciously as you walk past him down the narrow hallway. Before he can stop you, you disappear through a door, taking the stairs to the second floor. That is, you know, I really understand this feeling. I've had to actually sneak around in hotels too to get laid, TBH. Um, but that's a story for another LP. For now, we're focusing on our good friend Super Swag Johnson. You take the elevator up to the top floor, your palms sweating, feeling like you're on some sort of secret mission. Your, your curiosity grows stronger to find out who this weirdo actually is. You arrive at your floor, find the room, and knock. <clears throat> so clearly this is the correct answer. I'm here for the dicking. Come ravish me, you cad. Well, that's actually not what you should say. Although, I actually don't think that pisses him off. He has a pretty good sense of humor. But we're going to go with, hey, it's me. Hey, glad you could make it. Listen, there's been a change of plans. Let me guess. You're going to cut a glory hole through this door so you can stay discreet. Ah, no, it's a nice door. Not a bad idea, though. If you think I'm going to wait around while... I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Here's what I actually need you to do. Go back downstairs and head outside, the same way you entered. Then come back in through the main door, through the crowd, down the red carpet. When the big dude asks who you are, tell him you're Fred Funt, and pretend to be super excited to meet me when I come through the elevator door. Okay, let me get this straight. You made me jump through multiple hoops to see you, and now you want me to go back downstairs and walk into a huge crowd and pretend I'm someone named Fred Funt? Yeah, pretty much. So, this is going to immediately end the date. You gotta go along with his request, basically, or you just immediately get kicked out of this, so we gotta say okay. You mind telling me what this is all about? 
look, I don't have time to explain right now, but we can still have a date tonight, okay? It's just gonna be a little bit different. Dot dot dot. Please? At least you'll get a free meal. Think about that. Uh, and it'll be a good one too. I'll explain later when we're in the limo. Just please get down there. Hmm. You know, I'm, I'm down for a limo and free food. You slip downstairs out of the side door before re-entering through the main lobby on a red carpet, elbowing past the crowd. Cameras flash as members of the crowd gawk at you and murmur, Is that him? Oh, I think that's the one. A man dressed in black stands in your way, staring you down. He appears to be the security or a bodyguard. Name? Uh, Fred Funt, and oh boy, oh boy, am I thrilled to be here. Real excited. Like capital E excited. Capital X. C. Okay, I got it. Capital I. T. He grabs you by the collar. I told you, I got it. So he excited. He ushers you towards the side of the room. Somebody notices and screams, That's him! That's the dude who won! A girl with a camera races up and snaps a picture. Oh my god, you actually get to meet Terry, OMG XD. I'm so jealous, how do you feel right now? Well... The crowd surrounds you, holding their breath as they wait for you to answer. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm about to pound that boy like sheet metal. Um, and that's what the crowd wants to hear, right? So we're gonna tell them that. I'm so hard, I can't wait. The confused looks on the fan's face say it all. Uh, wow... Another woman whispers something to the bodyguard. They both stare at you in concern. I mean, uh, um, I'm gonna put my penis inside of him. The bodyguard stares you down. Or maybe just, like, the tip? And we actually shouldn't say that. <laughs> so we need to go back in time. I just wanted to show that off because it's pretty funny. So uh, we are going to pretend to be excited. I'm so excited. Ah, doing the bottom option um, also pisses him off a bit, so we're going to do the top one. I'm so excited. Ah, your squeal pe pierces the air. Ah, exclamation point. Like wolves calling to one another, the fangirls hear your cry and squeal in turn. Together, the sustained high pitch of your voices threaten to shatter all the glass in the building. The elevator dings. Everyone looks towards the sliding doors. The crowd breaks into another collective scream when a young, tall, slender guy steps out and walks over to you. It's the pop star. Terry loves co Um, Terry- Oh shit. Terry- Oh my god. Holy shit, that's so embarrassing. Terry Lovelock. I almost said Terry loves cock. Um. Anyway, don't worry about it. Although you've never been a fan of his chart-topping teeny bopper music, Terry Lovelock's rise to stardom has been impossible to ignore. For the last three years, his sugary hits have saturated the airwaves. Just last week, you caught Ian singing, I know for show sure my bow ain't yo-ho in the shower. You realize the pop sensation is your date, and you're about to hang out with him. Terry offers you his hand. Hey, I'm Terry. Uh, so you want to keep it cool. You want to be excited, but not like over dramatic. Um, and you don't want to say you don't want to say he looks so much older in person. He gets really pissed off at you. So we're gonna say, I can't believe I'm finally meeting you. It's good to meet you, Fred. I hope you're looking forward to our date tonight. I know I am. Let's head to the car. His bodyguard directs the two of you towards the doors, across the red carpet, past the screaming fans, and into a limo. You take a seat across from Terry, whose perfect, blinding white smile disappears once the limo door closes. So in case you were wondering what the hell is going on, my management ran this contest where a lucky fan could win a dinner date with me. And you selected the winner from a dating app? Oh god no, here's what happened. First of all, I kinda spaced and totally forgot it was tonight. Secondly, when we ran a back background check on the official winner, it turned out to be some dude who was caught going through my trash a few months ago. Not really my first, second, or ten millionth choice for a dinner date. 
Still, we had this whole thing set up tonight with the press, so it'd be a total drag to reorganize the event. So I'm pretending to be Fred Funt? Yeah, that's his name, or what he goes by anyway. He grabs a glass from the mini bar. He will check it out. Uh, I'm getting a drink and I'm not even offering you anything. What would you like? I'll have a uh, dirty flaming reaper, easy on the vodka, extra vermouth, and I'd prefer the fruits ground with the motor, and pestle instead of just muddled. How about a glass of wine? Oh, okay, I guess. He pours you a drink as just as the limo hits a bump. He expertly tilts the glass, preventing a spill. Taking it from his hand, you cradle your drink and take a sip, glancing at his long platinum veins as he checks his phone. Damn it! And I also forgot I'm about to fly out halfway across the world for a photo shoot. Terry downs his glass. I'd cancel, but Dahlia's going to be releasing a single soon. As her official boyfriend, trademark, I have to show up at her birthday party in London. Publicity boost and all that. Your girlfriend? Yeah, we've been an item since October. You don't mean to tell me you haven't heard of Dahlia Murphy, right? I've heard of her, the singer, right? I just didn't realize, well... I mean, you look... Uh, anyway, uh, you're wondering if she knows I meet up with dudes? No worries, she knows. We're not like a real couple or anything, just friends. Our whirlwind romance is a business arrangement concocted by our managers to aim to help both of our careers. Oh, okay. I mean, you know how the biz is, right? I, I don't, but I guess I'm learning. You know, a really good publicity stunt would be if we just had sex right here in this car. Um, I feel like that would really boost your, uh, your appeal to your fans. That's what the public wants to see. America wants to see Terry Lovecock's butthole. Um, and I'm all about helping you with that experience. But I guess we're here, so we're going to have to cut that short for now. Here we are, a mug for the camera. The driver parks in front of the Blue Sea, a Michelin star rated sushi joint. You open the door to a red carpet. Once again, more cameras flash, blinding you and making you wonder whether you'll still have your eyesight by the end of the night. The fan screams assault your ears as you step out of the limo. So, uh, you know, We've been pretty subdued most of the day. Uh, everything but the last one is okay, so we can either walk normally or do a spin move, flip, and then a somersault, and he'll be okay with that, but we can't flip people off. So we're gonna go ahead and do it flashy. Much to everyone's shock, you do a series of athletic kicks and flips across the carpet. The crowd goes nuts. Terry's eyes widen in surprise. You and Terry take a seat. Well, I hope you like sushi. Oh yes, totally, especially from this place. My favorite is the Bossy Roll, TBH. Um, you come here often, right? No, actually, I've, I've never been. I've always wanted to, it's just been way, way beyond my budget. You look around the room, absorbing the simple but elegant decor. It's very nice in here, actually. Very understated, like, I can't overstate how understated it is. You t oh my. You spot Terry's bodyguard seated nearby. I didn't realize your bodyguard was here. Oh yeah, he was in another car following us. These fans, the managers, this bodyguard, isn't it kind of surreal? Nah, you get used to it. Uh, do you know what you're ordering? Not yet. Everything on the menu sounds amazing. I'd actually like to try it all. Before you can say another word, Terry calls the server over and asks for one of everything. Seriously? It was just a figure of speech. No, biggie dude. Whatever you like, we'll get more of, you lucky bastard. Well, you're not having any? Look, I've got a photo shoot tomorrow, and I get this tragic rash when I eat too much food. Seafood. I'll just chow down on my bowl of miso. Excuse me? Well, I need to take a trip to the bathroom real quick. As you get up, you hear Terry sigh wistfully as he watches someone eating a piece of tuna at the next table. Oh, I'm sorry, Terry. You're washing your hands when you feel someone behind you breathing in your ear. 
Can I help you? Uh, question mark. You're eating my dinner tonight. I want you to know that. I know that. F Fred Funt? Relax. You're acting like I'm going to shank you or something. Well, the fact that you've got your hoodie pulled up like that, and you snuck up behind me, and you've been going through Terry's trash, I mean, I just don't know what to think here. You seem kind of demented. No offense. Demented. Let me explain something to you, buddy. Some people waste their time following idols around, scrounging for every detail they can to fill the voids in their empty, meaningless lives. Not me, I'm practical. All I need from you is a lock of Terry's hair. Um... Okay. That makes complete sense. It actually does. You get me some of his hair tonight, and you bring it to me. I'll be in the hotel lobby waiting. And why would I do that? I'll give you 300 bucks is why. I'm almost afraid to ask, but why do you want his hair? To sell. There are a bunch of sickos out there who will pay good money for something like that. Hell, if I know what they do with it. <laughs> oh, hell, if I know what they do with it. Don't know and I don't want to find out. He hands you his business card. Fun celebrity souvenirs. Well then, uh, that was definitely interesting, so I guess we need to act... Do we tell him that that happened? I don't know. Okay, anyway. Hey, you okay? You look a little shaken up. So this is the big decision I was talking about. You can decide to actually go through with this plan, and you will get the 300 bucks. Um, or you can just pretend nothing happened, or you can tell him what happened here, basically, and he'll just sick his bodyguard on him. So I am actually going to show you what happens when you say this, because I know that people are probably going to feel apprehensive about actually doing this, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go along with this plan. However, I'm going to let you know also that... These choices do not decide if you have sex or not. If you're worried about filling your gallery and you're looking for the not safe for work scenes, um, either way you answer this will allow you to have sex with him. So, that being said, I'm going to make this decision and we are actually going to cut the video here because this is going to be a long ass date after this part. So, I don't want us to have to cut in an awkward place. So with that in our mind, we need to get this twink's hair and we're gonna sell it and we can get 300 bucks from it. I'm gonna show you how, and then not only that, we get to have sex with them. Sounds like a win-win, right? Yeah, um, except your soul's gonna get damned to hell the second you accept this offer. So we're doing it, because that's what I'm about. Anyway, I'll catch y'all later. Thanks for watching, and bye.